This is Umar Ahmed for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. We're in Las Vegas. Hamza Shiraz does his camp in LA, so I appreciate uh, you flying over. But it's a short flight, uh, especially from an internal American yeah. point of view. But yeah, thank you for making the trip over. It's good to see you mid camp. How's things going, Hamza? All good, Umar, man. Just chasing the American dream, mate. <laughs> yeah, all good, all good. Well, I am joined by the Young Fight of the Year. Uh, of course, that was awarded to you at the Boxing Writers Award. So, the names who have won that, I mean, we could go through them, sort of the British boxing legends who have won that award. So, what does that mean to you, Hamza, to be put in that class and category? Listen, it's a massive achievement. It's definitely my biggest boxing achievement to date, like ever since I've been in boxing. Like you're saying, the names on that list is incredible, man. Even just to be mentioned across the names so early on in my career as well is an absolute honour, man. But like they say, hard work pays off, doesn't it? Hard work pays off and I'm on, I'm, on, I'm on the way to getting that crown next to my name, hopefully, man. So, yeah, God willing. Yeah, it was a shame you couldn't actually be there. But, um, yeah, you're, as I said, mid-camp yeah. in Los Angeles. Um, is that move paying off? We've seen a couple of British fighters make the move to America early on in the career and it's yeah. really paid off. Yeah. Um, I was speaking to Taz about this. It's a lot of money, it's a lot yeah. of effort, it's commitment away from your family and yeah. friends and your comfortable environment in the UK at home. But is that the key, you're away from comfort? Yeah, that's, that's the massive, you know what it is? When I was in England, I thought I was training hard till I come out to America. And then I just got to kick up the arse, man, and got like back back on track. Not that I was off track, but training wise, I, like, like is this is just leaps and bounds and levels above what I was training at in England anyway, no disrespect to who I was training with, but um, yeah, to be to be great, you've got to be out here, do you know what I mean? You've got to be, not necessarily you have to be out here, but personally, in my opinion, I feel I've got to be out here for what I want to do and the way I fight and the way I go about things, and especially being out here on on spon sponsorships money as well and other people's money, it's a lot more, it's a lot more, um, I wouldn't say pressure, but it's more the fact that, listen, you're here and you, you mean business only. You've got to be here, get on with things, train hard and keep, keep winning. Looking back, were you distracted in the UK or not? You, I'm not saying you were, but yeah, were you? Yeah. You was? Do you know what it is? It was, it was like, not, I didn't even realise I was distracted, if that makes sense. Like, you go out for meals with your family, you go out for meals with your, your mates and you think, yeah, I'll go out here and I'll be all right, I've got, I'll be all right for training the next day. You don't realise it's like unintentional, unintentionally distracted. And then, like I said, I come here and like you're in almost a lockdown, man. You're going to the gym, home, gym, home, gym, home. I only go out on a Sunday. But I've almost acclimatised to it now. And I think to get to get where I want to be and to reap the rewards, I've got to, got to keep, keep at this for the next 10 years or so, maybe, and just sweep up. Well, aside from that as well, the sparring back in the UK, I'm sure you were getting some top-level sparring, but surely it's on a different completely different level here in Los Angeles. Yeah, Matt is a huge, huge like training at the what sparring this camp after we're doing a lot of heavy sparring down at the wildcard gym in front of like the likes of Freddie Roach and all the top trainers here. Obviously it was quite intim intimidating the first camp because of, like imagine going from a normal gym in England to going to the wild card and ten goose in front of Joe Goose and in front of Ricky, in front of Freddie Roach. It's, it was kind of like, whoa, like do do I actually belong here? But now fourth camp, full swing, I'm I'm enjoying it. You know everyone, everyone knows you, and uh, yeah, happy days. Have you also noticed as well, in the UK, of course, you were being talked about a lot, top up and coming fighter, kind of the top dog yeah. in the gym, yeah. but the guys here, whether it's Americans, Puerto Ricans, Cubans, Mexicans, yeah. whatever, they don't really care who you are and they're trying to take your head off. Have you noticed that? You know, especially being British, Umar. <laughs> swear to God, I swear to you, especially being British, like, you go in there, as soon as you walk in the gym, all eyes on you, get a mad dog, like, all hungry, ready, got their head guards on, just ready to tear your head off. But the way you earn respect with them lot is in the ring, is in the ring. You can't show any intimidation and you just got to, like, at the start, go hell for leather, man. Get your respect and then you can start working on the technical things. But um, it's good, it's good. The first camp I was a bit shocked, like, whoa, what's happening here? But like I said, now fourth camp, full swing. I'm enjoying it, man. Yeah, you're in camp for July 16th, uh, live from BT Sport, yeah. um, headlining that card. We'll come onto that second, but just to go back to the award you won yeah. the other day, is there anyone on that list who's won it before out the Brits that you were a proper fan of or inspired you? Do you know what? All of them, all of them, Uma, all of them. The names on there are incredible, man. The names on there are incredible, and especially being the second, the second British Pakistani to win it is also an a, a a accomplishment itself. And it's almost like it's almost like an added pressure now, isn't it? Like your name's on that list now. Almost you have to go on to become world champion now. Not that I'm doubting myself, but 
it is def it's an added pressure but um I'm I'm forever grateful for winning that for winning that award and I don't want to dwell on it I don't want to like like hold that forever do you know what I mean oh, I've won that award now now I've got that expectation now I'm main eventing now it's time to literally like get cracking and start getting my name up in the world title contention levels you finished off the well, your, your last run of fights with a really strong win yeah. over Jez Smith. Yeah. Um, and it shows how much you came on in one fight after the Bradley Skeet yeah, one to yeah. pick up the young uh, Writers Award as well. Um, was there a bit of surprise, though, considering the fight with Bradley Skeet, that you did pick up that award, Hamza? Is that a fair question? You know what? I saw my name was up for, nom for the nominations, I think, a few months ago. And I thought... After all that controversy and after all that noise, I, I probably won't get it. I thought that as well. No, it wasn't ability-wise. It was just because of that, you know, that whole messy situation. But listen, it just goes to show that the boxing writers do actually know what they're looking at. And hopefully I can, like I said, go on and, and um, prove them right. What did you make of Colin Hart's piece? Um, he drew a comparison with yourself and, and Tommy Hearns. Um, what were your thoughts when you when you read that, Hamza? No, it was a good read. It was a good read. Like early on in my career, I used to, I wouldn't say get compared, but I think because my build, long, like athletic, um, lengthy, kind of like knocking people out, I think you're, I'm almost gonna get compared to Tommy Hearns. Uh, just looking wise, I'm not saying boxing ability wise, but um, yeah, looking wise, and hopefully I can get to the level he got to and fight like him because he was a beast, man. He was a beast, but like I said, everything's added pressure now, isn't it? <laughs> well, it's only a good thing. That's what builds superstars at yeah, the end of the day in the sport. So you've got to overcome that at one point in your career, and it's come at a young age. Um, but I was just speaking to your trainer, Ricky, there, who's actually a told me how he's only back in boxing because of you. I didn't know that. Um, yeah, you drug it, dragged him out of retirement. Yeah, yeah, dragged him back into, I think, what was it? About four, was it four years ago or something like that when I was about 19? Just before the Ryan Kelly fight when I won the, that, my first title, um, I'd done a pad session with him in England and we both thought nothing of it. Like I thought, yeah, I'm not going to ever go out to America and he thought, yeah, I'm never going to come. But um, thanks to Taz, massive thank you to Taz, he made it happen and he got Ricky round to accepting me as a fighter and his his first fighter after ages and getting back into the game and I think it's a different avenue for him now going the English English route through like Frank Roaring and all the English shows and everything so he's definitely lapping up as well <laughs> and actually Taz said that he was done with boxing as well until yeah, you man. came along <laughs> do you know what I mean I'm I'm out here digging them up from their graves getting them back into boxing uh, no nah, listen it's, it's it's a blessing it's a blessing at least it shows that they see something in me do you know what I mean it shows that they see something in me and um, definitely people like them is, is the people I need to get to where I want to get obviously Taz has been there seen it done it been to Vegas, been to Los Angeles, and he's he's the one who told me like, listen, if you're, if you're serious about what you want to do, come out here and just props to him. Well, you certainly got good backing in Ricky and Taz, and another man who's really backed you right from the start, and he's a big fan of you. Um, of course, he promotes you, so he's going to be a big yeah. fan of you. I'm talking about Frank Warren, but he really does seem to take a liking to you and has backed you literally from the start yeah. um, and is pushing you to become one of his top guys and one of the top fighters he's ever had. So what's that like having the backing of a Hall of Fame promoter like Frank Warren and also the, the backing from BT? No, it's incredible. It's incredible. I always say it, I say it all the time, he gave me a chance when no one did. Like my amateur career, I always say it wasn't spectacular. Frank signed me up, gave me the opportunity and now look, here we are today, main event in my first show come July 16th. And yeah, going back to what you were saying, it's, it's an honour. It's an honour, do you know what I mean? Having someone like Frank, who's been in boxing for, for years, man, and been, been to the top, is, is at the top, getting his back in and getting co like compliments after compliments um, off, off of Frank is, is, a, is, is a massive thing, man. It's a massive thing. And it almost gives me, like, I wouldn't say the motivation, but it also gives me, like, that extra push that like you've got a proper promoter like, behind you and who, who believes in you. So just get cracking and get get to the top. Got to deliver him for him now. I know, man. That's it. Go, go. Added pressure, isn't it? <laughs> well, yeah, you take on uh, Torres on July 16th, as you said, headlining at Wembley Arena, um, who's had a draw with Benavidez, which is kind of his notable thing when you look on his record and has some... Um, was, well, has been on a good run. I think he's had nine or ten wins on the bounce. So would you say this is your biggest step up to date? Yeah, 100%. 100%. Listen, he's, he's an Argentinian... He's just had a draw with Benavides. His confidence is going to be through the roof. He's, 
you got to think about it. he's think in in his eyes he's drawn with someone who's world level now he's in his eyes anyway he's going back down which is not the case but it's it's a good thing it's a good thing it's a good step up as well listen he also beat um who's the guy who got knocked out by charlo the other guy uh, castano he beat his brother he beat his brother as well so listen he's up there he's he's got he's an awkward tricky opponent but um Listen, nothing I'm not prepared for. Nothing I'm not prepared for. I've got six weeks and hopefully it'll be the p performance of my of, of my life. Okay, well, we look forward to it. Um, yeah, is there anything you'd like to add before we close off, Hamza? No, just a massive thanks to Queensbury for all the coverage out here. Massive thanks to Frank, to my dad, Taz, Andy Ellen, everyone, everyone. And uh, yeah, hope and obviously to yourself as well for allowing me to do this interview. And um, yeah, hopefully July 16th, buy your tickets. Absolutely, watch it live on BT Sport. I've actually remembered one more thing uh, I've got to ask. Um, we saw Denzel Bentley uh, become two-time British champion by beating Linus Adolfia. A lot of fans were calling for that, as you now are at 160. We know you've got your fight on July 16th, but is that a clash that you're open to, Hamza? No, as soon as he won that fight, uh, uh, Frank, um, they gave us, they delivered the fight to us, said you versus Denzel July 16th, and uh, we said yes yeah, straight away. But then um, I saw his interview and what he said kind of actually made sense, to be fair. Both get the world ranking and hopefully be able to fight for Eliminator, uh, which made a lot of sense, to be fair. But um, yeah, it was a good fight as well. I watched it actually uh, over here in LA. It was a good fight and congratulations to him. Two-time British champ, which is a good achievement, man. Yeah, I think it, what he was saying was that he's just become British champion yeah. again. At the moment, you don't really bring much in terms of a title yeah. or a ranking. Um, but he's saying let's make it a bigger fight and then fight. So is that fair from, from Denzel? Yeah, I'll tell you, it's definitely fair. I, I still think personally it would have been a big fight now anyway. Yeah, but um, yeah, one, one that once there's a world ranking at state or, or an eliminator, like you said, then it just becomes so much more intense, which fair enough makes sense. Okay, Hamza Shiraz, thank you very much for talking to IFL TV here in Las Vegas. Safe flight back to Los Angeles and we'll see you back in London. Thank you very much, man. Thank you. Welcome, Team Everlast, to the Team Everlast Fitness Act. Download the Everlast Fitness app and find your greatness within.